A world-renowned Peruvian musician uses his music to teach the community about Latin American cultures. A Goshen College professor discovers an abundance of food, family, and love on a visit to Thailand. A student wants her love for environmental science to inspire others. A Goshen College basketball team thrives on a culture of excellence. I'm Jesse Bontrager, and you're watching The Correspondent. For this episode of The Correspondent, we come to you from the Found Gallery in downtown Goshen, where culture and art exist together in this beautifully renovated building. You can visit Found at thegoodofgoshen.com and find out more about this local treasure. Goshen College strives to help develop global citizens who have an interest in other cultures. International travel is one way faculty and students better understand our world. Over the summer, Goshen College communication professor Dave Kendall and his family traveled to Thailand. Sorti Khan means hello and goodbye, goodbye, hello. Sorti Khan. Traveling to another place and in particular to another country can be a really positive and eye-opening experience. My wife, my daughter, and I were fortunate enough this past summer to travel to Thailand, and this marked the first time I was able to meet my wife's Thai family in person. I was born in Thailand and lived there until I was almost three years old. So traveling back home is something that I've really valued over the years. Taking my husband and daughter there made going back even more special. I want to make sure that my daughter really connects with her Thai heritage and her Thai family at a really young age. All of my mother's siblings and their children are all in Thailand, so going back home is really like a family reunion. This trip was really important because we were able to travel with my mother, Hun Mae Lam Yai, and celebrate the opening of my village's new church in Bang Yang Se, Roy En, Thailand. Landing in Bangkok and traveling to Isan was incredible. I was finally meeting all of these people that I'd seen in pictures and talked to on the computer, but seeing them in person, I saw my wife's face in their faces, and I saw my daughter's face in their faces. Being there made that connection more real. The Thai culture is really incredible. The people are so warm and inviting, but there's also something special about the quality of life there. They work really hard, but families seem to be able to spend lots of time together. They, they love being around each other. I'm so close to my Thai family, even though we are half a world away from each other. There's such a strong bond. My daughter hit the ground running, playing with her young cousins for hours, playing in the dirt and the sand, picking fruit, I ride it on an elephant on Thailand, and I made rice, and I ate white fish. It's very good. And I play with my Thai family. Got to go to their new church. I play instruments, boom, boom. I could talk for hours about our Thai family and, and the people over there, but the food. The food is, is just, nothing compares to the food. Seeing it being prepared, and tasting all of the layers of flavor, and eating with other people too. Uh, my mother-in-law always says that when you eat food with other people, it tastes better, and I'm completely convinced of that now. My Thai family are rice farmers. My grandfather, Pai Sieri Iran, grew rice on our land in Isan. My mother rode a water buffalo and grew rice on that same land. And when we went back this year, Dave, Poppy D, and I were able to help sow the seed on that same land. I think traveling is one of the most powerful ways to feel rooted in the human experience. Whether we're riding in boats in a floating market or riding on elephants through the jungle, we were experiencing something so far removed from our Western way of life here, and at the same time, it felt really natural. I grew up traveling because of my father's work in the U.S. Army. We left Thailand, and from a young age until I was in middle school, I lived in Germany. I feel like I have a pretty unique perspective on what it means to be a global citizen because of that. That might be the most important thing. You know, doing something completely different. And after you do it, it's part of you, and you bring that home and your eyes and hopefully your mind are more open because of that. Goshen College third year student Rena Ramos is determined to use her passion to make a difference and she wants her love for environmental science to inspire others. 
My name is Rena Ramos and I'm a third year ecology major and I'm from Auburn, Indiana. It's about an hour away from here. So a large part of my childhood was being outdoors and being connected to nature and a lot of the things happening in our environment today are caused by humans or because of human development and impact and our increasing population size. I just feel like I can use my life to better the world by restoring habitats or by just understanding the ecosystems and educating people and helping to protect land. I feel like that's kind of my calling. I always knew that I wanted to do something with environmental science, but sometimes I would like have little thoughts like, oh, you know, is what I'm doing even worth it? Like, nobody cares. Um, am I even going to be able to better the world in this way? And I just kind of have to like push those thoughts aside and kind of say, hey, you know what? Like, this is something I'm passionate about. And even if I'm one person, like if I can just restore one wetland or if I can just protect one area land or I can just educate 10 kids. I mean, that, that's making a difference, right? On a global scale, that's, that's helping everybody to work together, helping everybody to understand it's helping the environment, it's helping um, future generations, it's helping our generation. I think one of the big steps we need to take into helping better the environment and helping to reduce our carbon footprint is to educate people and especially children I think are very important because they're the next generation coming up and living in this planet that we are destroying. We can be a beneficial part, it's just people don't realize that or people just don't care. So we need people that are willing to go out there and be willing to risk that all and um, restore environments and be a part of protection and be a part of education. If we all work together, and are able to help other people understand the importance of all of these ecosystems that are running our world. I believe that we can start to move towards having a more healthy and natural world. I guess those are things that I uh, struggle with or worry about, on a, not on the daily, but every once in a while, just thoughts like that creep into my head. And just gotta try to stay positive. Music has long been an integral part of civilization. It can even be used to teach others about culture. Nayo Uyoa, a world-renowned musician from Peru, has made Goshen his home. His music is rooted in Latin American arts, which he shares with the community. I was born in northern Peru, um, a long time ago. <laughs> When I was growing up in Comas, was very, uh, was big, very poor, extremely poor. It's, there's no poverty in the United States you can compare to that. <laughs> what music means to me keeps changing as, as I live. When I think back to Comas, where I grew up, music was sort of a refuge. Because I, I was very poor, I didn't realize it. I love music, so I started playing music, and I can express myself by playing music. Then in 1981, I was playing in a club, a place called Guifala, it was a pity, and I met this uh, white American woman. Yeah. And, I was like, and that began my whole thing about the United States. I had no desire to come to the United States. I wanted to go to France, that was my dream. And they said, well, will you come with us to the United States? To do what? what? to play the instruments and they will not take it. Sure. <laughs> and actually, since I moved to Goshen five years ago, it's kind of reshaping again what is music to me. And, and as I get older, it's becoming more uh, like a, a way to uh, represent people that have no representation. Some of the music that I play has been passed down by generations. So when I play the music sometimes I think I'm, I'm just a vehicle now. It's not about me anymore. I'm beyond, I'm beyond that. It's really not about me. So that's where I'm at right now. It's a, just a way to bring people together, a way to um, maybe educate some people, maybe expose people to other cultures that otherwise they wouldn't know anything about it. Last year, the Goshen College women's basketball team made it into the Final Four in the NAIA Conference. 
we go to Core Sports to learn more about the culture of excellence. Coach, um, she puts a lot of emphasis on team culture and she's very big on making sure we all know what kind of attitude she expects from us both on and off the court. I think Coach Miller does a really good job of just like throwing us into random things a little bit. So we go on a team retreat and so this year we all had little different teams and we dressed up. My group was old ladies and we like walked around uh, this little town up in Michigan and had like a video scavenger hunt and we're all super competitive, right? So that was really fun, that aspect of it, but just like being silly, that, that's really helped us. We mesh really well. Um, we do a lot of off-court things to, I mean, before the season started, we had a team camping, I guess, retreat or bonding uh, retreat. And it's just a way for us to get to know each other on a personal level. So then once we do that and get a close relationship, it's easier to translate that to the court. We've established that more important than best friend kind of mentality is sisterhood. So that's a much better term for what good culture looks like because you don't like your sister all the time. You don't even want to be around her sometimes. We're not here to be nice to each other all the time and like just, you know, smile and everything we do is just best friend mentality. Like we're competing, we're competing hard for jobs and it's, it's, it's tough. I'm trying to take the ball from you every time. And if that makes you feel bad or look bad, you got to get over it. It's a competitive culture, but so is sisterhood, so is brotherhood. It's a competitive culture. And the best part about it, though, is that you don't have to always love each other. You don't always have to hang out, but you have each other's backs. So when we leave the court, you know, get over it and let's go eat a meal together. Get over it and let's have some fellowship together as a group because we have respect for one another as competitors, even if we're upset with one another. The culture of excellence means to me um, day in and day out, 110%. And um, when you're down, um, or when you've lost a game, or you you know two bad practices in a row, it's that next step has to be in the opposite direction. You can't just like keep bringing yourself down. It's that attitude that okay, I'm going to do 100% better the next time. It, it would mean to me coming. Approaching like whatever you do with the attitude that you're going to give it your all and even if you don't, even if you're not the best at it, you're going to give your best every day. The most important part of quality culture is understanding three basic concepts. Respect for your coaches even if you don't get it. Respect for your teammates even if they took your job. Respect what we're all there to do. The second one uh, would be loyalty. Loyalty is a hard thing to come by and it's basically you don't, you, you know, you protect your team and you protect your coaches and you protect our culture. And then the last one, I would say, would probably be selflessness. Um, if you come into our locker room or you come into a team with good culture and you're a me person, you're toxic. So for us, you gotta be a selfless person and understand that I'm gonna pass the ball around to you and sometimes I'm gonna get it back and sometimes I'm not, but we're all gonna celebrate a victory regardless of who has what numbers. Thanks to Spencer Buttermore for that story, and thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. We'll see you next time on The Correspondent.